When we discuss coaching for race walking, we have four things that we can control. The physiology, the biomechanics, the psychology, and the error avoidance of an athlete. We can't control their genes. We can give these common names. Physiology is the physical fitness of the athlete. Biomechanics is their technique. Psychology is their thinking or mental approach to sport. And error avoidance, you can put that down to experience. We put all of these factors together and it gives us an end performance, the final outcome. The biomechanics is what we're going to focus on today, the technique of race walking. Walking consists of a very large number of different possible bipedal actions. However, race walking has two rules and so forms a distinct subset of walking. This athlete is within the rules of race walking. She's landing on a straight leg and keeping contact with both feet. However, if you watch her center of mass, look at the top of her head, she's wasting a lot of energy by going up and down. So we need to focus within the two rules of race walking on making the athlete efficient if they're going to race fast. We start by giving them a mental template. We show them an athlete of similar build and get them to focus on their form until they can mentally recreate it when they're out training. To really be able to perform race walking you need to be mobile with dynamic and static stretching and also strong with weights work for example. It's also important to have a very strong core and that will prevent some of the flaws we're going to see later on. The method that we correct flaws is uh, rememberable by the acronym LAPCRAF. L stands for locating the flaw. We then make the athlete aware of the flaw. We prescribe a change and we give them cues for the correction and then give rapid feedback as they practice the correction. First off, we locate the flaw. The easiest way is obviously visually. The athlete or the coach can analyze by visual inspection and this may be live or from video. You can also talk to the judges. If you've got a disqualification problem, listen to the judges. They know what they're talking about. They're often quite qualified as coaches as well. Find out what you've been doing wrong. If you're coming back from an injury, you may have an asymmetrical um, flaw due to favoring one side. So the first thing that we'll do is to make the athlete aware of the flaw. If they don't know about it, they can't change it. Simply explaining, for example, that an athlete's dropping the hand too low may be enough for them to realize what they've been doing wrong. It may correct right away. We prescribe a technique change. By that I mean we tell the athlete what they need to be doing differently. This may require additional strength work or stretching to be able to do these improved techniques. We give them cues for correction. So while we're coaching, we can shout to them so they get a verbal cue. Keep your head up, lead with the heart, not the head, bend your arm, and so on. We can also give visual cues such as a hand tap to the head or the arm so that if they're in a race situation and can't hear what's being shouted, they'll get a reminder if they are repeating their flaw. Best way to practice these changes is with, with bursts of 25 to 40 seconds of the improved technique at 75 to 95 percent maximum velocity. Going 100 percent full speed uh, it tends to produce more errors than it cures and tiredness is also a big enemy of skill acquisition. It's very useful to do this on a track. You can go 25 to 40 seconds fast along the straightaway and then an easy recovery around the bend taking 60 to 90 seconds. So you're alternating 100 meter bursts. It also permits a coach to stand in the infield and to provide verbal cues to give feedback. The rapid feedback of, for the athlete really helps form correction. Uh, you can think of the feedback loop as being how quickly they get the information that they're doing it right or wrong. This can be done, for example, with a closed circuit video on a treadmill 
or mirrors or you can uh, give them verbal instructions but we can also use taping elastic tape or elastic bands to give them proprioceptive feedback on body position longer feedback loops are less useful and this could consist of video review between bursts of race walking or coaching between bursts here we see a coach shouting instructions giving verbal cues to a group of athletes and here we see a setup that we've used very successfully we have an open-sided treadmill T which has four cameras C around it these are just security cameras um, but so they're fairly inexpensive at V you can see a monitor which is showing a video of uh, elite athletes and M is the monitor at the top showing the the camera views here's an athlete view of uh, the, the setup you can see at the bottom screen the London Olympics and the top screen four views of the athlete we can actually switch between views and enlarge any of these so they can see their upper body feet left or right side we can also give instant feedback with elastic bands and elastic tape the elastic bands have velcro to allow them to be placed around the upper and lower arms and an extendable elastic strip between the two so that it doesn't fix the arm position but gives feedback if the arm deviates beyond a certain range the tape is elastic I prefer KT tape but there are several elastic tapes on the market and the elastic tape is placed so that if an error is made such as opening the elbow angle too much it will stretch and give feedback here we see a coach videotaping with their phone and they're now showing the athletes on a long feedback loop where their errors have been occurring we correct flaws in a certain order start with the whole body posture get the whole body right first then focus on the upper body working from the heart outwards to the fingertips get the arms right and that will position the hips correctly we work from the heart outwards down the legs and feet last of all a common flaw leaning at the waist this is a postural flaw the athlete has been taught to lean when race walking unfortunately they've interpreted it as leaning at the waist this athlete is demonstrating a curved or cup shape for the whole body their head and feet are forming it in, them into a curve you can see that sort of cupped sh or sitting shape in this example the athlete is leaning backwards their hips and feet are in advance of their head all the way through the stride which is very inefficient so we've located our floor we're now going to make them aware of the floor and prescribe a change we might make them aware by taking a photograph with our, our uh, phone maybe adding some lines to explain the body position error we prescribe a technique change we tell them to get their body straight and generally slightly forward uh, we'll then give them some cues for this such as stay upright and give them feedback as they practice the correction another method of providing feedback for athletes who lean at the waist is to put elastic tape from their lower back to their mid hamstring when you see this in action they're leaning forward and they come upright when they feel the tug from the tape you can watch from the side the athlete feels the tug they move to an upright position another problem with the head rolling or leaning from side to side very wasteful on energy it's not just an aesthetic problem here's a floor with the shoulders being held too tense or too high here's a more subtle problem to watch for lifting the shoulder at each step let's watch this slowly at each stride the shoulder girdle is lifted so that mass is lifted against gravity wastefully at each step 
these shoulders are being rolled around so the arm is locked in position it's not swinging from the shoulder but it is moving around in a circle it drops down and it comes back over the top the whole shoulder girdle is being moved which requires moving that mass on the other end of the range we have a locked shoulder that's being rotated the whole shoulder girdle is simply going around and around rather than the arm swinging from the shoulder we can see the back of the athlete and the front of the athlete because of that rotation we can correct a lot of these flaws with tape for feedback you can see the tape stretching if they move their head around so as they walk if their head goes off to one side it gives them feedback and they come back into correct position we can also see the crinkling of the tape if they lift their shoulders up with this format of taping and that gives them feedback just through the skin so that they can feel the incorrect position here we see an athlete with excessive range of motion in their arms the hand is swinging up into eye level in front and the elbow is coming up to their ear behind this is excessive another problem with arm swing crossing the body sometimes called Popeye arms swinging to the opposite shoulder here we see an excessively open elbow angle the angle at the elbow should be 90 degrees or more acute the elbow here is too far open producing a long pendulum and a slow arm swing and the hand comes down below the short a lot of these things can be corrected uh, through this drill we have the athletes stand with their feet a little way apart we swing with the correct range of motion the hand coming just up in front of the straps of a singlet to just behind the shorts and the hips counter rotating in response to this you can see the arm is swinging from a fixed shoulder and the shoulder girdle does not rotate around the central axis no cat required we can also provide feedback on the elbow angle particularly with tape we fix the elbow in the correct position then we put tape along the joint to the side so that if it opens up the arm is swing, swung too far open the tape tugs on the arm we can also use elastic bands these are fixed around the upper and lower arm with velcro the elastic is positioned so that if the arm angle is opened more than 90 degrees the elastic will tug on the wrist and the upper arm to remind the athlete of this error you can see it in slow motion there is some play there is some release in the elastic and it simply gives feedback this is a floppy hand problem uh, like a fly swatter hand the hand is swinging around uselessly on one side instead of being generally fixed we provide feedback on this error by putting tape along the wrist joint so if the hand drops down or flops the athlete can feel what's going on here we see them with the floor corrected wearing a piece of tape they may need to do this for a couple of weeks uh, until they're uh, fully corrected on that floor we now move down to the legs these errors are not just efficiency errors but they're also legality errors this athlete is landing on a bent leg and straightening it after it has passed the vertical this is a common error amongst beginners and athletes coached by people who have not read all of the rules or understood all of the rules of race walking they are maintaining contact with the ground but they are bending their legs all the way through the stride so this is not legal when we look for a straight leg make sure that you are looking just at the moment of heel strike and don't get confused very fit athletes are often quite skinny and they may have knobby knees this is also prominent in older athletes so look for a straight line ankle knee hip don't look at the kneecap we can also check that the athlete has sufficient static mobility and dynamic mobility to keep that leg straight you can see the athlete on the right here 
with good technique landing straight and bending as the leg goes behind and the athlete on the left landing bent and then straightening late if at all. We teach them what it should feel like to have a straight leg on contact with a sweep drill. They put the leg straight in front of them, hold for a moment so they can feel it, and then they sweep it backwards, progressively, progressively going faster. So the first stage, they are standing supported with a straight supporting leg. They place the landing leg, heel down, toes up, just in front of the supporting foot, and tell the athlete to focus on that sensation of having a straight leg at heel contact. They hold this position for a moment, they begin to sweep the leg backwards with the leg straight until it just passes the vertical. They should then start to consciously bend the leg and roll up onto a vertical foot at the end of the stride. Here it is in slow motion. Hold for a moment, feel the sensation of a straight leg, sweep back straight, begin to bend just past the vertical and up onto the tip of the toe. Here we see the foot action in detail. We'll slow this down for clarity. The foot comes backwards and watch the white midsole foam. You see it rise to a vertical at toe off. Athletes walking with a high knee are inefficient and at low speeds they are still legal. However, as the speed increases, this action becomes more and more borderline until at the very highest speeds you can see this action produces lifting. The high knee does not have enough time to get the foot back onto the floor before the rear foot has left the ground. This is visible to the judges and will give disqualifications for loss of contact. We provide feedback as the athletes train for these floors by having them wear loose fitting pants. These tug against the leg if the knee is lifted too high. They'll feel this and it will remind them to keep the knee lower in front. A related floor is kicking or hurdling the foot out in front. The leg is up straight in front rather than a high knee and it then has to come back onto the ground. This wastes energy and can lead to lifting. We teach the correct return of the foot to the landing position with a chip drill. We place a small ball beside the supporting foot. And the athlete is instructed to chip the ball and to then keep the heel on the floor without the knee going up in front of the body. So they chip the ball and the heel stops on the floor with the toe up. Here it is in slow motion, chip, heel on the floor. So there's no forward deviation of that knee. We can combine the two. Here we see the sweeping drill and then chipping back into place. So it's a stationary drill, sweep and chip. We put the two together in an athlete. We see the chip action and then the leg sweeps back before it bends. It is in slow motion. You see the chip sweep action. Chip and sweep. The knee doesn't come up in front of the body. So there's lap craft. We locate our floor. We make the athlete aware of the floor. We prescribe a technique change along with any remedial strengthening or stretching that's required. We generate cues with the athlete, both verbal and visual, so we can remind them in training and race situations uh, to correct these flaws if they re-arise. And we give them rapid feedback as they practice correction of the error. I want to thank Sue, Jesse, Tori, Mike, Pablo, Miranda and Molly for their permission to use their images in this video. I'm your narrator Ian Watley and special thanks to Jesse and Tori who put up with a lot of filming. If you want to see some more videos about racewalk training and coaching 
please go to tinyurl.com forward slash walk 2020. Thanks for listening.